There are songs of praise from Clan Didno this Sunday evening, then at 7.15, a few home truths for Jacko. So far as taking responsibility is concerned, you haven't grown up. Well, I could sit behind the desk so me nappy wouldn't show. <laughs> at 7.45, Butterflies. <laughs> Gentlemen, may I present Mr. Muscleman himself, the incredible, the vibrant, the potent, Mr. Adam. <laughs> then at 8.15, the Laurence Olivier Awards 1991, hosted by Angela Lansbury. Mastermind at 9.50 comes from the Great Hall, Nottingham University. Then at 10.20... Part of the matter examines charismatic healing meets people who claim to have had miraculous cures and asks whether those cures are medically sound or merely raise false hopes. And this is the look of Sunday night on BBC One. Now on one, it's cartoon time with Popeye. In ten minutes here on one, teams of dogs will be competing in the final of the Super Dogs competition. Now on BBC One, another in our series dealing with strong emotions. It's OK to Talk Feelings looks at the emotional stress of miscarriage. shouting where's my baby where's my baby and being really desperate and being soothed by the nurses but once I was conscious and able to think straight I was only aware of being very relieved that the pregnancy was over that just lasted a while and that was that was quite a comfortable feeling but it wasn't very long before that began to be succeeded by sort of waves of crying and sort of I suppose the depression really began there, but I didn't recognise it. I never acknowledged that. Uh, and I gradually was crying less and sort of apparently despairing less on the surface. But in fact, underneath, I was feeling more and more of a failure that I hadn't even managed to have a baby. The one thing, you know, that surely almost any woman might be expected to be able to do, and certainly I expected it of myself, that I would be able to have a baby. And I couldn't even do that. I, I was... I was, in fact, angry and bitter and resentful. I didn't know any of that. I was just in a kind of confusion, a whirling confusion I couldn't have described. It, it was a, a horrible time, really horrible. <laughs> Anger, resentful, resentful, angry, really desperate, really horrible. Um, so it's like one minute you're in an environment where you're pregnant and having a baby and the next minute you're in a an environment amongst women who are having sort of hysterectomies and abortions and and it and it felt felt like it felt like someone was taking my baby away from me. It didn't, it didn't feel, I suppose I couldn't quite believe that I'd lost it. It felt like it was actually being taken away. When I got home, I felt, I felt, I felt safer to, to, to let go really and just, 
I just sort of sat on, I sat on the chair, I just sat on a chair for, for a day with, with my coat on. I didn't really want to take my coat off and I just, just couldn't, I just couldn't stop sobbing and it, and it felt, it felt very frightening, that feeling of, uh, going out of control. It felt like I had to keep holding my breath or, or, or keeping myself t together to sort of control myself in, in some way. It felt like, it felt like something I'd never experienced before. I didn't know, it didn't, it didn't feel safe to, to, to feel that, that upset and that, that, that much sort of, um, loss and, and emptiness. Loss. Emptiness. And it didn't feel safe holding my breath. Control myself. It didn't feel safe holding my breath. Control myself. It didn't feel safe holding my breath. Loss and, and emptiness. I would cry and cry and cry with a kind of nameless despair. Uh, I could, at that time, I wouldn't have said, oh, this is about my miscarriage, or this is about my anxiety, or this is about my failure, or anything like that. I just was in it, uh, and it overtook me, and people would sit by me and hold my hand, and the waves and waves of crying would just roll up and go through me, and then drain away, leaving me sort of exhausted, washed up on a kind of shore of despair. Uh, I don't know which was worse, the, the emptiness or the, or the waves of crying. Crying is too pale a word for it, really. I'd be just sobbing my heart out. I felt guilty feeling the thoughts that I, I did. I felt guilty. I felt guilty hating pregnant women. I felt guilty feeling resentful. I felt... I felt guilty about being angry at, at my partner. I felt... Uh, and then, and then I felt, I felt really, very, really angry with the baby. I felt like, you know, there was, there was a, the time when I suddenly felt like, why, why did you die? You know, why, why couldn't you have grown properly? Why? And I was just so angry with the baby. And, and, and yet then that felt so upsetting to be angry with something that had no, um, you know, how, how can you be angry at a baby that's trying to, to, to develop? And I, I desperately wished that I'd been able to see what the baby was in some way, whether it had been a girl or a boy, anything like that. I would have liked to know anything, but the guilt went on and on, yet it was unacknowledged in me. I had no way of working out or coming to terms with feelings like that. I think that was probably quite an important part of the of the depression that followed feeling guilty. The most helpful comments were, 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 were from very close friends who acknowledged what had happened and acknowledged the fact that, that I had lost something and I had actually lost a baby. It, it, it's like you lose, it, lo you lose, it loses the future, it, it loses all your dreams and, and even though it's so early you still you're still feeling that it's going to have a birthday and you know it's going to be born in such and such a time and it's and and that's what you lose 
um, you, 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 you very much lose a real person. Strong emotions are not always easy to deal with. The OK2 Introduction to Counselling offers a guide to the help you can get. Supported by the Mental Health Foundation, it's available free by sending a large self-addressed envelope with a 32 pence stamp to OK2, BBC Education, London W12 7RJ. To speak to somebody in confidence right now, you can call our free helpline on 0800 500 800. The lines are open until 10.15 tonight. For a better understanding of human emotions, the book, It's OK to Talk Feelings, which accompanies this series, is available now from bookshops, price £4.99. I've come to see Mr. Kinsey. Well, I'm afraid Mr. Kinsey has suffered a serious professional setback. Problems for Kinsey as he struggles to rescue his reputation. Mortgage frauds, misappropriation of clients' funds, the mud sticks to us all, and especially to Kinsey. And protect his practice. I'd take anything rather than work under the same roof as you. Let me have that in writing. Staple to your forehead if you like. Kinsey fights back Tuesday, 9.30 on BBC One. Now on BBC One, Peter Purvis introduces coverage of the final of Super Dogs. venue, Superdogs 90 is the event. And we're all gathered here again in the glorious sunshine in the heart of Warwickshire for the final in this competition to find the winners of the Win-A-Lot Challenge Trophy. It's going to be between the South and the East in this regional team competition for dogs and their handlers. And as usual, there'll always be something special. Certainly in the obedience event, keep your eyes peeled. It promises to be a very tight, fast and furious competition. I'm looking forward to it. Let's meet the teams. And once again, we have ten in each team, including the non-playing team captains. On the left in yellow, the south. On the right in white, the east. And we begin, as usual, with the obstacle relay race. Four pairs go in each team. And as they get ready for the start, the judge, Mrs. Sally Sanford. Jackie Meader and Charlie on the far side for the east. Karen Theobald and Cookie on the near side. And it's the south who go out in the lead. Good balance from Karen there. As soon as one finishes, the next may go. So the south in the lead. And the service pairs are going here. For the... They're <laughs> going the wrong way as well. Near side, PC Chris Allen, Ministry of Defence Police, with Cougar. On the far side, WPC Jill Baker and Perry. Graham Stanley and Pip going through nicely there. And we've got Dot Randall and Jody on the far side. Dot coming out and Jody's very pleased to see her. This is a real icebreaker of an event. Gets the spirit of the whole game as Maureen Inkpen and Tess get through onto the final walkway. The South are leading, nearly catching up with Dot and Jody on the far side as. Fran Graham and Cap bring up the end for the East. It'll be four points to the South, three to the East. On to the lake for the gun dog test, which is in three parts, and we begin with the straight retrieve. And both pairs taking part here won their semi-finals in good time. The South go first with Aaron and Jason Froome. Aaron is an English Springer Spaniel, four years old. Are you ready? Gun. And that tests the steadiness. There goes the dummy splashing into the water. Aaron's marked it. And off he goes. And that's a wonderful entry into the water. The duck in the foreground again, the decoy. 
Aaron chased it a little the first time in the semi-final. What's he going to do here? Straight to the dummy. I can see the duck, he says, but I'm not going after you this time. Sunster Aaron, full name, and Jason is an apprentice engineer from Burgess Hill. This is fast. This final promises to be very close and very good. Any penalties? It looks clear. That's good. 45 seconds. That's very fast. Very good time indeed. Well, Birdbrook Teak is the representative of the East. Teak for short, handler and owner. This is Janet Webb from Cambridge. You can hear the judges voice. It's Bernard Hall who is judging this. Go back. Nerves must be tingling there for Janet Webb. She did pretty well in the semi-final. Straight into the water. Labrador retriever, two years old. Janet and her husband, you see the duck going past there, but Teek's not bothering with that. Well, might have, but there was the whistle. Janet uh, presumed that Teak might have gone after the duck, whistled, and the dog responded. But Janet and her husband are professional gun dog trainers, and they're both on the field trial judges panel. They've also done obedience. But they've done the lot. Now then, time to beat. 45 seconds. This is very close. 24 seconds the clock stopped. Oh, fantastic. Southgate three, the East get four from that as we move on to the three-way retrieve where the dummies are hidden on the island, in the copse, and behind the bales in the open ground. Once again, they have to be collected in that order, and again, the South will go first with Pip, who's a flat coat retriever. And he comes from Minster-on-Sea near Sheerness in Kent with his handler, Graham Stanley. Get on, get over. Get on. Mr. Pip of Targo, that's the full name. And according to Graham, Pip loves to please and to work. Five-year-old dog, black coat retriever. Now Pip's gone very wide out here. Very much in the wrong direction. Got to get over to the island. The whistles made him respond. He just loves his swim. There's Hello. the island. Now, Hello. where's the dummy? Well, there's Hello. one of them. He's not spotted that. There are others on the island. They're all hidden in. There's one. Hello. Good and boy. he's got it. Good. So now he can head on back to the shore. The judge for this event, as I said, Bernard Hall, who's a very respected uh, journalist. He writes on all matters concerning dogs. His wife, Rosemary, actually captained the Here. South in last year's Super Dogs. Get on. Get over. So Graham now sending Pip off to the cops. Over. Hello. Oh, and that was a very good jump out. Hello. Hello. Graham certainly got a thing about uh, flat coat retrievers. This is his third. He's a building inspector with uh, British Telecom. Oh, no. And there's a lot of grass there with the uh, dummy. Here. Here. Get on, on. And now, not into the cops again. Back. Out into the open ground. Here. And wandering the wrong way there. Get certainly on. get penalties get for this. Over. Over. Hello. We'll have penalties from being in the water Hello. and for deviating there. Certainly 10, possibly 15. Good Not too bad, though. Good time. Finishing in 2.24 and 15, says Bernard Hall. And this is Solomon for the East. English Springer Spaniel, two and a half years old. Handler, Mrs. Wendy Knight, who's a nursing auxiliary from Colchester. Well, they had a disaster in their semi-final. Can they do better now? Wendy on, certainly has the pedigree all right. She's made up two field trial champions, and she's the secretary of the Eastern Counties Spaniel Society. Now remember, springers don't normally retrieve. They spring game. And Solomon not doing very well there. 
And unfortunately, another failure for him. He was disqualified. It just wasn't his day. The South End take four points and the East, none. Non-specialist dogs now don't normally do water retrieval. And the South go with their service pair. Police Constable Chris Allen with Cougar. They're playing their joker. They're very confident. That means if they win this section, they'll double their points. Are you ready? Yes. Throw the dummy. Cougar wanted to go early in the semi-final and uh, did and was penalised, but this time Chris held on to him. Five-year-old German Shepherd dog. And in this final, although they're non-specialist, the decoy duck is there. Good lad, Cougar come. And Cougar would like that decoy duck, but he knows he's got to go back. With the Ministry of Defence Police, based down in Wiltshire, winners of the... National Ministry of Defence Dog Trials Police Dog Section. Joker run this. Big play. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Oh, he did that before. That's a shame. That's time wasted and a penalty. Come on in, come on in. That could be expensive. With the Joker being played, that could be very expensive. Come on. Now, the time still not handed over. It's going to be over. Not getting there. Come on. Give, give, give. Still not giving it. Still not giving it. 108 plus 5. 113. That's an expensive mistake. This is cap for the East. Made a great hit in the semi final. Won just about everything. And you'll see a lot of him in the final, too. Handler Fran Graham from Earl Shulton in Leicestershire. Five-year-old Border Collie dog didn't win in the semi-final. There goes the duck again. Ooh, look at that. Loves his swim. Immediately after this event in the semi-final, Fran was down there by the water giving Cap a really good play training lesson. Cap loved it. And we'll see whether it's paid off. Very keen competitors. Very intelligent dog learns very quickly. And this time looks excellent. Oh, it is. Very fast. And they're clear so far. He's done nothing wrong. Playing again. Oh, they'll get five seconds there, but it's going to be all right. 46, they win it, and the South Joker is blown away. So that disqualification didn't matter too much. The South get 10, East get 8. Overall, it's 14-11 for the South. The obedience test next. It's in two parts, a team event and a non-specialist event. Team event first, John Hogan for the East, putting out three articles, a toy rabbit, an egg, which is not in its shell, and it stands in a bowl of water, we really make this difficult, and a bar of chocolate. The dogs have to collect them, and Meg has the first try. Meg is a ten-year-old border collie bitch. I brought the chocolate. <laughs> Hold it, Meg. Good girl. Over the jump, off to the tray. Now, what are they going to make of that? Bar of chocolate out of its wrapper, which he's bringing well. Tempting stuff, this. John from Luton in Bedfordshire, where he's a bank messenger. In this team event, four points for the winner. Three, two, down to one for the fourth place. Already brought the chocolate back. Time limit of two minutes for this event. Meg not gone out there. Finally, John manages to persuade her away. Right, an egg there, out of its shell, in the water. Meg likes that, stop her for a drink. Oh no, she's eating the egg. Oh dear, well that's a 20 point penalty. 20 seconds there, go away. Brought nothing back. <laughs> now, a toy rabbit. Hold it, good girl. Go on, Meg. Hold, hold. Big fluffy toy there to fetch. Good girl. Hold, Meg. Hold. Was a thought. Good girl. that they pick it up. It's soft and easy. Yes. Well done. Good girl. Come on, play. Not settled yet. That's it. Round and a sit. He's making them do proper obedience sits on this. One nineteen plus twenty makes one thirty nine. It may not be enough in this company. This is Chansey for the South, a working sheepdog bitch, six years old, from Burzeldon, near Southampton. 
handler is Terry Hannam, who's a builder. You may remember this one from the semi-final. Has a sort of skipping movement with his back Hold legs. It. Ben, hold it. No, she's uh, having a drink. Hold now, what's she going to do? Come on in. Come on. One egg. She's Come thrown on. it back into her mouth. I don't think she's eaten it. No, she's brought it. Good girl. Presented it well. Bruce Bartley is the judge on this, and he's being very strict on the way the dogs present. Fair enough. This is the final. Hold it. Hold it. Missy. Come Here's on. the chocolate. Come on. Come on. Terry's got two dogs. He's got Chance's do uh, dad, which is called Riley. So it's a better worker, but getting on a bit now. Chancy, though, very green at this level. Go back in. Go back in. <laughs> Rather like that chocolate, please. Riley, the dad, is a very good worker, but Chancy here, a little bit timid. Probably frightened of sheep and geese, but uh, likes to work chickens because she thinks they are sheep. Good girl, good girl. I don't know what she thinks good about girl. toy rabbits. Good girl. Hold it. Come on, then. Good girl. Hang on. Well, this isn't bad at all. Come on. Good girl. Hold it. Good girl. Okay. That could well be clear, but it's a crooked sit. Bruce Barton's given five-second penalties there for not sitting straight at the present. Very tough, but it is the final, as we've said. They're in second place as we welcome back Jody. Golden Retriever Bitch. Going for the East, ten and a half years old, but still loves to compete. A one-eyed golden retriever with Dot Randall, the staff nurse from Hemel Hempstead. They've been a sensation during this competition. The, the audience just crowd around the instant they appear in the ring. First one to pick up the rabbit first. Oh dear. Five second penalty for knocking down the bar. Got a tail going. Happy animal. Three years ago, had cancer in that right eye, had the eye removed, still going strong. Dog in a million, a pat dog, proactive therapy, which means that they go to hospitals, places like that, patients stroke them, good therapy for them, and proves a wonderful temperament for the dogs. And Jody's going very well here. Lovely kennel name she has too, Stony Dean Ivory. Very popular with the crowd. Just the egg now. There it is. That's it. That's nice. Well, actually, I'm not sure if it is nice. They're over the time limit, by the way, so they're out of it. There's nothing in there, Dodge, is it? <laughs> they're over the time limit, and the penalty doesn't really matter. They'll only get one point for that. This is Cindy, eight-year-old German sheepdog. Chance for South now to really put on the pressure, and who better in a situation like this than... Sylvia Bishop, a handler from Coldine in Brighton, regulars at Crofts. I'll tell you something about this dog. Cindy had a vitamin deficiency when she was a puppy, and it affected her joints and her nails, and vet said she'd never get past her fifth birthday. Well, she's now eight, and she was the obedience champion at Crofts in 1988. And look at the way she moves slowly and carefully, but no oh, sign of that really quick, quick. bad back leg good that she girl, had. Good girl. Sylvia absolutely devoted to her dog. Good She's got uh, a number of border collies. She's good training a long-haired chihuahua to do yes. obedience. I can't good wait to see that. I haven't seen them go work on, yet, but it must be a wonderful sight. Good girl, home. Cindy, home. Cindy, home. Get it. Go home. Well, she's brought the go chocolate go back, but she's uh, go not go too keen home. on getting the rabbit and the Beautiful. egg. Good That's good. Better now. Go Brilliant go in the semi-final. Not Cindy, quite so good in this. Oh, a little bit... So, I don't know what it is. Something about that uh, egg in the water that's bothering all the dogs. <laughs> Ready? Ready? <laughs> 
Looks easy Good enough to pick up, up, doesn't it? But it, maybe it's the fact that it's in the water Did they don't it? like. Well, time's running out for them. That's a good job, Sylvia, but you've knocked the uh, bars over. But I don't think this is going to score any points. And in fact, to show Cindy how to do it, she's popped the egg in her mouth. They'll only get one point, as did Dot Randall and Jody, so that will be 5-4 in favour of the East. Non-specialist dogs now, and it's cap again with the Joker. Double points for a win. Fran Graham, the handler again, and I think uh, he and Cap really ought to get the all-rounders prize. They really are in absolutely everything. Look at the condition Holy. of that dog. A wonderful coat. Oh, Cap. Good lad. Come on. This is uh, going to be slightly easier for the non-specialist dogs. They haven't got the chocolate there. It's uh, a sausage, and the egg isn't in the water. Caps won a prize for Fran, a trip to Belgium for a win in a sponsored agility final. The regular winners. Terrific competitors and uh, really have done a tremendous lot for this team from the East. That is a clear round, 40 seconds, no faults, brilliant, Joker played. Well, Cookie here has to follow that for the South, this four-year-old Gronendahl bitch, with Karen Theobald from Dartford in Kent. 40 seconds the time they have to beat. Hold it. At their best, they could. Hold it, Kirk. Hold it. Agility Kirk, is their hold. strength, though. Cookie's full name, Glenys' Fortune Cookie. Got to the last 16 in the Spillers' knockout final this year. Come on, away, away. Cookie, away, come on. Good girl. Hold it. Karen just about to start work at the Royal Veterinary College where she'll train students. Cookie's quite fast over the ground, but they're going to be struggling, I think. Well, that's wasting time. I'm going to try and get that sausage back. Yes, Bruce Bartley picks it up. <laughs> it looks like the East Joker is going to win. It's just, I think, that Cap and Frank Graham are really quite exceptional, and uh, everyone else struggles by comparison in it. That's good, but... Whoops, the egg's broken in bits, they get a penalty for that, I'm afraid. One minute, ten seconds, plus five. They're in second place. Big swing then from this. The East take full advantage of the Joker. The South seven, the East 13. From three points in the lead, the South now trail by three. 21-24. Twenty a new event now for this final fly ball. It's the best of three heats. Four pairs go in each team. And the course itself has four jumps and a fly ball box. All will become clear in a moment. East on the left, south on the right. Jess going for the east, Carrier going for the south. Over the jumps, touch the box, ball flies out, catch it. That's what they have to do, and back over the jumps, and the south are in the lead. Now it's Abby for the east, and Dasha for the south. Well caught, and the East are now clearly in the lead. Cap going at the end into everything, isn't he? Good catch. The East are way out in front. The last one going for the South now, but the East have won it. That's heat one. So here we go with heat two. Same running order. Off they go. And on that first run out, the South take the lead and are staying in the lead. That's uh, Carriad getting back. Dasher going very well for the South and a good catch. And in fact, Abby for the East has missed out those jumps and will have to go again. Now the German Shepherd Dog there is Major Holly is the Border Collie in the foreground as Cap goes very fast. 
they are catching up, but I'd say that the South is about one length ahead. Best going last for the South. And Abby now on her second run, she's catching up. How close can it get? Is she going to get there? No, not quite. The South with it, that makes it one heat all. Here's the decider. Same running order. Are you ready? Go! Yeah. <laughs> this is just marvellous fun for the teams. <laughs> oh, dear. Just going back to see if there's another ball to collect. So the South in the lead again. There's Dasher. Well caught. But it's neck and neck. Abby's caught. Dasher up. Holly and Major going now. There's Holly away. Major, unfortunately, a rather slow GSD. As Cap goes last for the East, and it looks as though the East are going to win it. Comfortable win for the East as Bess brings up the rear for the South. That's got the jumps to go over. So the points, six to the South, eight to the East. Overall, 27 plays 32. The East increased their lead. Terrier racing now. And we welcome back for the East, Jack and Thug for the South. Jack's a cross and Thug is a Jack Russell Terrier. Jack owned by Bob Gibson from Pickering, North Yorkshire. Thug owned by Keith Fleetwood from Weymouth in Dorset. And in they go into the traps. And who's it going to be? Neither going over the jumps, but it's the Jack Russell by a neck. Thug wins it by a neck. Here we go. They both come this side. That's very odd. And they batter and charge against each other. But Thug just gets his nose ahead and holds it. On to race two, and here we're going to have Lady for the South and Tanner for the North. Lady a Jack Russell Terrier. Tanner is a Border Lakeland bitch, four and a half years old. Vera Harcourt Morris from Warminster owns Lady. Judd Chambers owns Tanner from Weatherby. And it's Lady who wins it. Good race. Oh, I say, wait a minute. I, there's, this is actually going to go to Tanner. Lady did not go over the jumps. Tanner did. So it's seven each, the points. 34-39 is the overall score. And time's running out for the South. One event to come, but a lot of points. The agility test in three sections. Team, service, and non-specialist. First up in the team, test for the South, handled by Maureen Inkpen. Wait, wait, wait. Time doesn't wait. start until the dog goes. Maureen wait. taking control. Come on then, get over. Come on, over. Walk on. Those yellow wait. points wait. must be contacted steady. by the dogs. Steady, steady. Good girl. Different route on this course wait. for the final wait. than the one that we used in the semi final. Wait. Wait. Good girl. Here, close, 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 tunnel. Come on in. Wee. Test, five year old working sheepdog bitch. And that was very neat. Onto the table now for five seconds. Wait for Sally Sanford to count. No, off too soon. Penalty there. Tess has won two novice classes in 1990. Making good contact on those points. Got to turn right here now. Now it's a good long run round to the finish. Watch this. Here we go. This is a startling fast finish. Oh, isn't it good, eh? Very good. 54 seconds plus 5 makes 59. That's quicker than they were in the semi-final. Lord Charles of the Manor, Charlie from Dagenham, goes next. Five-year-old German Shepherd dog with Jackie Meader. Team event, remember. Points, 4, 3, 2 and 1. Missed the contact point on the A-frame. Five-second penalty there. Now, it's a very flexible animal. Some of the GSDs don't quite weave as well as that, but that was very neat. The count couldn't start until Charlie was down. Five seconds to add. 59 seconds overall, the time to beat.
On to the final stretch now. It is quick. 49 seconds plus 5, 54 seconds total then, in the lead. And here's the Gronendahl again, Cookie, with her owner, Karen Theobald. These are the real agility specialists, I must say. Come here! <laughs> yes, don't you dare go over there. Marvellous response, though. Karen, very experienced. She runs Cookie in a team with uh, Cookie's mother and two brothers. Four black Gronendahls. I didn't hear that. She said sorry she bumped into the dog. That was nice. Cookie onto the table. Always does well in agility, but of course isn't as fast as the collies. A little bit faster than most of the GSDs. Fifty-four seconds, the best team. I think they're going to beat that. There it is in the top right-hand corner. It's a good time. It's going to be close. It's going to be very close. Forty-nine seconds clear. Excellent. That puts them in the lead. But here's the real danger dog. It's Cap again. Fran Graham, of course. They've been in everything and won everything they've been in so far in this final. This five-year-old Border Collie with the engineer, Fran Graham. Marvellous to watch this. Now that's wonderful. Absolutely like a snake. So alert, so bright. Making all the contact points. Excellent control. Fran having a lot of difficulty keeping up. And there he is on the inside. This is tremendous. It's the winning run, no question. Brilliant. 39 seconds clear. The East will get six. The South will get four as we move on to the non specialists. And the South go with the gun dog, Aaron, English Springer Spaniel. Narrowly lost the straight retrieve, you may remember, in the water with Jason Froome, his handler. Wait. Wait. Oh, that's good. Didn't get over that in the semi final. But really, all over the place, this little Springer. Well, a lot better than they were in the semi final. Certainly learnt. He loves it. Look at that tail. Actually, I've got a sneaky feeling that with Springer Spaniels, the tail stays still and the body wags. Not learnt the weave poles, though. Sally Sanford will be very lenient on them. Even though it's the final, non-specialists get uh, a little bit more leniency. I won't get down, I see. Why not waste a fair bit of time? Come on, steady, steady. Come on, here, here. Come on, come on. Uh, what are you going to do? <laughs> nice. Come on. But he has yeah, learnt. Yeah. I mean, he really didn't do anything right in the semi-final. And he's learnt a tremendous amount. Over, over, over. Yeah. <laughs> get in, get on, get on. Get back. Good. Yes, good luck. Three attempts at that over, before. Over. Now gets doing one, but knocks the bar off. That's a shame. Yeah, Alan, over. Good boy. Here. Over, good boy. That's very good. Wow, what an improvement. Terrific. 154, 10 seconds to add. Excellent. 204 is the time. That's nothing, says Jody. We can beat that. Well, I wouldn't take bets on it. Jody and Handler, Dot Randall. Possibly the most popular pair here in the competition. Certainly with the crowd, they love it. <laughs> she has such a difficult time going over those jumps. Teddy, this way, this way. Over ten years old. Such a stroke. But Dot is just marvellous with her. Just jollies her along and keeps her going, and the dog's having that wonderful time. That's really what it's all about. 
no point in coming into these competitions if you're not going to have fun. That's very neat, very nice. Again, big improvement uh, from the semis. <laughs> they do get a lot of faults, though. Amazingly confident, really. The dog's actually handling her, holding her collar there. And that isn't allowed, really. But uh, for the non-specialist, it's not all that serious. They are picking up a number of faults, quite a lot. <laughs> No. <laughs>